Hello there, I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com and in this video I'm going to want to change this image that we have here in Camera Raw into a bit of an aged photo. So I want to put a bit of a, a sepia tone to it. Now I've gone ahead and done all the edits I want to do in Camera Raw and open it up in Photoshop. I would press Open Image but I already have it open so I'm going to press Cancel in this instance. Okay, so here's my image in Photoshop and what I want to do first of all is to make it black and white. So I can go to this black and white icon down here and I can come up to the adjustment layer that is black and white. Click on that. Now I know from fiddling around before that there is really only red and yellows that I want to change in this and in this instance I'd like to change red to about 14 and the yellows to 109. I just press tab there to tab between the two different colors. Okay, there we are. Now I can add my tint here as well just by clicking on this and then I can change on the color swatch here just to make sure that I get the color that I'm after. Now I'm kind of clicking around trying to find the one I want but I can also come into the saturation. Let's go down a bit. Click saturation and using the slider here just to reduce the saturation and then the brightness too I can use the same kind of slider on the brightness to get what I'm after. Okay, back to hue. And let's just bring that up a little bit. Okay. Now one of my favorite blend modes is soft light. So I'm going to try that here. Soft light. And that gives me a nice effect, but you notice I get all the colors back again. So I'm going to put this back to normal. And I'm going to duplicate this black and white layer, control J. And then I'm going to change the duplicate to soft light and then bring down the opacity somewhat. And that's okay, but it's not great. I've lost a lot of control. My sepia tone looks a bit washy washy now and I'm not really that happy about it if I'm honest. Let's go over to LAB and see what we can do there. I've got the same image open on this one. Now LAB color space doesn't allow a black and white adjustment layer. So we're going to have to do that first. So here I go, exactly the same as I did before. And again, I'm going to use exactly the same figures, 14 and tab to 109. But this time I'm not going to add the tint. Next, I go over to Image, Mode and LAB Color. And it's going to ask me, changing the modes will discard an adjustment layer. Change mode anyway? Well, yes, I do. If I click OK, though, it's going to get rid of the black and white adjustment. So I want to flatten it. And there we are. We're left just with the black and white image. Now what I'd like to do is come down to this little black and white icon again. And this time, choose levels. You'll notice that black and white is grayed out. So levels. Now I could do this in curves, but levels does just a fine job in this instance. Now, where we'd usually have R, G, and B for red, green, and blue, we've got lightness, A, and B, hence the LAB color space. First of all, I'm going to go into A, and you'll notice there isn't the histogram like we might be used to. Now this middle slider will take us from red to green. We actually want to add a little bit of red. Let's go into the B and you'll notice this time our middle slider, if I click on it, it goes from yellows to blues. Let's add a little bit of yellow and you'll see that we're getting that deep sepia tone already. Okay, happy with that. Now I'm going to put this levels adjustment layer into soft light. And unlike the black and white layer in RGB, we don't regain the color. So that's working quite well. But we have lost quite a lot of our sepia tone. So let's go back into it and go back to our A and move it slightly further over. And then back to B, move it slightly over. And now we can play around with the lightness too. So in this instance, the middle slider will take us darker to the right and lighter to the left. I just want it just slightly lighter, I think. Now, if you wish, you can play with the other sliders, not just in the lightness, but in the A and B too, and see what effects you can get from that. 
In this case, I'm not sure I really want to. But the option's there, of course. OK. Let's bring that up just up, just maybe just a tad. And I'm going to go back into A. And you can see I'm finding it a lot easier to change my tones in this. OK. I'm going to duplicate the back layer. Control J. And filter noise. Add noise. It's about four. And there we are. So I've just added a sepia tone in the LAB color space. Finally, if I wanted to go back to RGB, where I might feel more comfortable, it's quite easy. Image, mode, RGB color. Again, I will have to flatten. But there we are. There's our image, given a sepia tone in LAB color space. I'm Tip Squirrel for tipsquirrel.com.